All right. Uh, can you please state your name and your position here at the Cathedral of East Hampton? George Gesaya, Pastoral Associate for Parish Life. And uh, what does your organization do, and who do you primarily help? This is specifically about Compassion, not the Cathedral of Life. It's, it's a faith-based organization, but Compassion is a support group uh, to help gays, lesbians, parents, siblings of gays and lesbians. And uh, what services do you provide? Pretty much it's a support group. We listen more um, than anything. Uh, we are there, we are present. Mm -hmm. But also we have an outreach ministry for the House of Proof, which is for those who have H HIV. So uh, that's part of the outreach of Compassion. And uh, what would you say is the most difficult part of your job? Relating to Compassion. Mm -hmm. You are viewed as by some, some, um, I don't know, we have this tendency in this society to think of people or to place people in boxes. We tend to see them as liberals or as conservatives. And once we label someone with one of these labels, then we view them as such. I'm viewed sometimes as a liberal, which to me is a foreign concept mm -hmm. because being on the side of those who need you doesn't matter if it's if that person is gay or if that person is uh, crippled mm -hmm. or that person is poor or homeless it makes no sense being on their side is and should never be a label that you know it should be the right thing that we do so the most difficult thing is the label it's the label okay uh, what do you feel is the least understood thing about the people you serve or about your organization? Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. What do you feel is the least understood thing about the people you serve or about your organization? Well, the people I serve, they are viewed as um, sexual objects. So they are not viewed as people. They are equal in their human dignity with everyone else's. So the only thing that seems to come to most people's minds is their sexuality, not their humanity. So that's kind of And uh, what do you think might help people better understand that? Um, talking, interacting, communication. Um, you can't walk by a homeless person and not look at them, not engage in a conversation with them, and say, I understand the plight of homelessness. You have to be part of, you have to engage, you have to include those people. We, in this society, other societies, draw, we love to draw circles, and we include the ones we like, we want in our circles. Mm -hmm and the ones we don't, we deem they are different, we just push them away and outside of that circle. So that's kind of... Um, why do you think this particular injustice continues to happen in our world? I don't think I have, again, an answer mm -hmm. to that. It's prehistoric yeah. uh, as far as we can go to our, uh, as, 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 as far as we can go and track our human history, this mm -hmm. injustice has been t taking place. Yes. Um, I think it's part of the human flaw, and mm -hmm. that's where we need to uh, connect with each other, uh, peel all the layers, and see each other as humans, as equals. And once we are able to, and that's the biggest challenge, it's just like love your enemy, it's a nice theme, but how many of us is able to love his, her, their enemy? Uh, we can't even love each other to love our enemies. So the biggest challenge is to peel all these layers and to see the humanity of each one of us. Maybe, maybe at that point we can start tackling the problem of injustice. 
Um, what are some factors that contribute to this happening? If you watch the news, this is a time of campaigns. You have Hillary Clinton, you have Trump. You watch at all the hate that has been fed, and people somehow seem to be a very uh, fertile uh, ground and soil for this hate. And we just take things, we never question them, and we just run with statements about and slogans about someone. We deem them to be not so good. So I think we ought to examine and question everything that comes to our doorstep, understand it before we make that judgment. We should not just follow every person and every statement that we have been fed. We should be able to think for ourselves. Um, who do you feel has the power to change the situation? I start with myself. So I can't change society. I can't change my own kids, but I can start with myself. And once we start with ourselves, then the impact we create, at least on our surroundings, mm -hmm. is phenomenal. So that's where we start changing ourselves. And um, in our class, we've discussed administering direct action and social action. Now, um, what we talk about in class, direct action is the idea that what you do yourself, whereas social action is what you do like with the collective, the group, the society. And um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think this is more of a direct action thing or a social action thing? I think it's both. Um, when I, and that's personal, and I know it's, on, um, it's recorded, but when I decided with a group of people 10 years ago to start Compassion, I was told that maybe that will create an obstacle for me getting other jobs in the church because I will be labeled as liberal or pro this and pro that. You have to take a stand as an individual. And that stand should not always be measured by benefits and losses. If you firmly believe in something and you believe in the goodness of that thing, the action, I think you should go for it if you can. As long as you respect other people and keep those boundaries. The social part of it is you bring other people to the fold. And once you do that, there is power there. People have ideas, people have thoughts, people have power together as a group. Mm -hmm. And the House of Earth, this project, has been one of the most successful projects that we even as a cathedral outreach projects are doing for a segment of people that no one wants to deal with. And um, we're supposed to create a project plan. What, um, in your opinion, would be a good project that we could do for that? Because I know that we do have to keep under the guidelines of the um, archdiocese and whatnot. Well, I think any time, I mean, maybe we can partner and do exactly what we're doing. We can come up with maybe fundraisers, something, something that can help the House of Fruit. Okay. Um, or St. John's Center, the homeless shelter for men. Not shelter, it's, it's a homeless, um, it, it provides services, it's mm -hmm. not a shelter. I know we mean. can probably do something with that. Okay. Outreach, doing something outside of self to help any group of people can in no way be in contradiction with the church and its mm -hmm. teachings. You know, going back to the roots, we ought to step outside of self and be able to do things that would empower or improve other people's lives. And I think we can do a lot 
but we will think of a project at St. John House of Fruit. These are ideas just like I just can't. Okay. I would be very interested in figuring something out with that. Yeah, we can. We can talk about it. Uh, that's all we have to do for the interview. Thank you again for meeting me. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.